Hello everyone. Probably no one is quite as off-putting as the Pharisee in today's story. We may well have similar traits but don't want to recognize them in ourselves. The Pharisee's problem is that he prides himself on being good and virtuous at the expense of this low-life tax collector kneeling at the back of the church or at the back of the temple. Many people try and convince themselves they are good because someone else is bad or less good than they are. We've all played that game. A good example might be the much maligned Magdalene laundries in 1940s, 50s Ireland. The church, the state, the families and society at large, whether rightly or wrongly, all thought it appropriate to set up these laundries for unmarried mothers in the first place. Like the Pharisee in bad-mouthing the tax collector to make himself look good, the church was forced to take the brunt of the blame for what was in essence, in essence, the collective guilt of a nation. But if I make somebody else look blacker than I am, then I might even feel good about it. You hear people say, I may not be the best Catholic, the best mother, the best father, the best priest, the best person in the world, but at least I'm not as bad as that so-and-so. That's the righteousness we award ourselves. It's called self-righteousness. And the Pharisee in, today is, in today's Gospel is a good example of it. Our goodness is only goodness compared with somebody else's badness or less than goodness. That's the position of the Pharisee. I can always think of someone who is worse than I am in order to make myself look better. That's precisely what the Pharisee did. Making... Maybe the little virtue I have comes fairly easily because that's the way I've been brought up. My parents, for instance, instilled in me, in me that I must be honest. It's no effort for me not to steal. If I did, my parents would have gone ballistic. But someone else may be really struggling with honesty and when they succeed in not stealing, that's a real breakthrough. It will have cost them ten times more effort not to steal than it would have cost me. And I'm sure it's the same with other sins. The Pharisee's prayer is bogus because it's exonerating himself at the expense of this poor tax collector. In no way does he see himself indebted to God's mercy. In stark contrast, a tax collector's only prayer is a cry for mercy. In the real sense, the Pharisee doesn't need God. And he imagines that with a few good works, which he keeps on bragging about, he can buy his way into God's good books. The tax collector confesses his own sins, not somebody else's. His goodness, or even his badness for that matter, is not in rivalry with anyone else's goodness or badness. For our prayer to be genuine, we cannot but stand alongside him, that's the tax collector. That is not the same, of course, as beating ourselves up and being filled with self-loathing. It's realising that we are all at the mercy of God's mercy, our witness. Our good deeds are a response to his love, but they don't buy our way into his kingdom as the Pharisee imagined. So whatever my public image is, whatever my position in society, I don't need to try and look respectable before God. In fact, I can't. I am what I am before God and nothing more. Like the tax collector, I stand before him as a sinner, relying on his mercy. Leave the rest in his capable hands. Now, thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.